right. Good morning. We are on the record. Two nine two 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 eight zero five. This is State of Idaho versus Brian Koberger. Mr. Koberger is in custody. He is appearing here in court with his attorneys, Ms. Taylor, Mr. Logston, Mr. Thompson, Ms. Jennings, appearing on behalf of the state. This is the time set in the matter for the preliminary hearing status conference. So I am going to inquire of counsel, Ms. Taylor, what's the status at this time? Thank you, Your Honor. We are going to ask the court to set preliminary hearing out into June. We would request the third or fourth week of June and probably four or five days for preliminary hearing. Mr. Koberger understands his right to a timely preliminary hearing and he's willing to waive the timeliness to allow us time to obtain discovery in this case and be prepared. And Mr. Thompson, are you in agreement with that? Uh, the state has no objection to that, Your Honor. Ms. Taylor reached out to us by email yesterday with her proposal. On reflection, uh, the state's calendar would be better in the month of July, but we will make the end of June work if that's the court's preference. And I haven't had a chance to talk to Ms. Taylor about that. I'm sorry, I know that's the last minute. That's okay. Um, the court's calendar is going to be better towards the end of June, early July. So would that work, Ms. Taylor, for your scheduling on your other matters? Your Honor, yes. If we take that fourth week in June, that's actually best. Okay. So, Mr. Koberger, I need to speak to you for a moment then. Sir, you do understand, and Ms. Taylor has represented here, that she's advised you of your right to have um, or fully discussed with you the right that you have, which is to have your preliminary hearing within 14 days of the date that you initially appeared before this court. As you recall, uh, when I advised you of your rights, that hearing is a probable cause hearing where the state has to establish that more likely than not, these felony offenses were committed and you were the one that committed the felony offenses. If you waive your right to a speedy preliminary hearing, it does not mean that you're giving up your right to have a preliminary hearing. It simply means that you would not be able to come back and challenge that the state did not present probable cause within 14 days. Do you understand? Yes. Have you had enough time to speak with Ms. Taylor about your decision to waive your right to a speedy preliminary hearing? Yes. Do you need any additional time to do so? No. Then I will ask at this time, as to the five counts, felony counts, that were charged in the uh, criminal complaint that was filed on December 29th of 2022, are you waiving your right to a speedy preliminary hearing and agreeing that that hearing can be held outside the 14-day period? Yes. And Ms. Taylor, do you concur with his waiver? I do, Your Honor. Thank you. I will find your waiver of speedy preliminary hearing is knowing, intelligently, voluntarily entered here in open court with the assistance of counsel. We will go ahead and set the matter for a preliminary hearing. Beginning Monday, June 26th at 9 o'clock a.m. And I will go ahead and reserve uh, the week, so June 26th to June 30th in the event that uh, we need all five days for presentation of evidence. And just so council knows, um, it will begin at 9 a.m. each of those days. Is there anything further to address at this time in the case, uh, Mr. Thompson? Uh, not from the state's perspective, Your Honor, no. All right. Or Ms. Taylor? No, Your Honor, thank you. Okay. Mr. Koberker, then you will be remanded into custody on your same no bail at this point in time. Uh, pending further proceedings, again, we'll send notice out to council, and we will be in recess for this morning. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you.